Hi, this is Kennedy from Start Team 5. In today's video, we are going to learn about the different skills or levels of measurement in statistics. In order to perform any kind of analysis on your data set, you first of all need to understand the nature of the variables in your data set. We can see that skills of measurement are the ways by which variables are defined and categorized. They tell exactly how variables in your study have been measured and the types of statistical analysis that are applicable or can be performed on the variables. See an illustration from this picture. Here we are trying to measure the length of this wood with a ruler. In this case, the ruler becomes a scale by which we are measuring the variable length. Similarly, in statistics, we can put any variable in a research study on at least one of four scales or levels of measurement. These scales of measurement include the nominal scale, ordinal scale, the interval scale as well as the ratio scales. The first scale of measurement is the nominal scale. The nominal scale is used to name or label variables into different categories without any order in the categories. So you are essentially naming or labeling a variable or its categories with no intention of ranking whatsoever. Also, variables on the nominal scale are non-numeric, so we cannot perform arithmetic operations such as adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing the values. Let's take a look at these examples. On gender, we can see that there are categories, male, female, others. The numbers assigned to them are only labels for analysis. They don't mean anything. For instance, we cannot say that male is better than female because male is first or one on the list. We can as well switch the places and make males two and females one. It still wouldn't make any difference or change the fact that neither group is better than the other. Another example of a nominal scale is the yes or no type of questions. When you ask your participants questions like, are you a student, you expect them to belong to either one group or the other. They can't be both at the same time. Again, the numbers only serve as labels. We can swap them and nothing changes. Neither category is better than the other on the nominal scale. Now let's look at our last example. Here, you want to know the continent the participant lives. A person can only live at one place at a particular time. So if you live in Europe, you choose Europe. If you live in Asia, you choose Asia. Also, note that in all of the examples, as I already mentioned, adding, subtracting, or performing any other type of operation on the numbers wouldn't make any sense at all. The numbers are just labels, and the position of the categories can be switched without making one category better than the other. Now, let's look at some statistical analysis that can be performed for variables measured on the nominal scale. We can describe the data with frequencies and mode and present such results on charts and tables such as this one. We can also conduct a non-parametric test such as chi-square test of independence or goodness of fit on a nominal data or nominal scale. But we cannot conduct any parametric test on a nominal scale. The next level of measurement is the ordinal scale. On the ordinal scale, data is categorized into groups with some intrinsic ranking in the categories. Even though there is some form of ranking on an ordinal scale, there is no metric to determine or quantify how high or low one order or rank is from the other. The only difference between the nominal and ordinal scale is that on the ordinal scale, there is some order or ranking meaning that one order is better or worse than the other. But as to what extent or how much better or worse, we cannot determine on an ordinary scale. If you take a look at this example, you can tell that a master's degree holder is highly educated than a person with a high school diploma. An ordinary scale is also ideal for Likert scale type of questions like how do you rate our product. Another example is that we can ask our participants to rank their favorite movies of all time in descending order. And this can be somebody's favorites. In all of these examples on the ordinary scale, we can see that there is some ranking in the categories. This is better than this. This is worse than this but we can't really determine the magnitude of how better or how worse one category is from the other. Also, the numbers are used to label and rank the categories, but adding or subtracting them wouldn't mean anything. Now we can take a look at some statistical analysis possible on the nominal scale. We can find frequencies, mode, median, and range on an ordinary scale. We can also run several non-parametric tests such as the Spearman's run correlation and others. There are several ongoing debates about whether parametric tests can be performed with ordinary data. Basically, parametric tests use means as the central tendency, but we can see that we cannot determine the mean on an ordinary scale. All right, let's move on to the next scale of measurement. 
On an interval scale of measurement, variables are grouped into categories with numeric values, which are ranked and have equal distances from one point to the next. Here is the catch on an interval scale. Zero on an interval scale is arbitrary and does not mean a complete absence of the variable. Simply put, zero is part of the values in a variable on an interval scale. Therefore, interval scales can have negative numbers. However, because of this ability for an interval scale to dip below zero, you can only find differences or sum the values on an interval scale. You cannot find ratios between two values, that is, you cannot multiply or divide values on an interval scale. This is because there isn't a common reference or starting point. Let's look at the example of temperature measured in degrees Celsius. Let's say the temperature in Ghana today is 30 degrees Celsius and that of Germany is 15 degrees Celsius. We can only find the difference and say that Ghana is 15 degrees Celsius hotter than Germany today. However, we cannot conclude that Ghana is twice as hot as Germany today. The reason being that temperatures in Germany can fall below zero. Meanwhile, in Ghana, the lowest temperature ever recorded is about 10 degrees Celsius. So we can see that the starting points of temperature in each country differs. Therefore, it will be unfair to compare or compute ratios for the two countries in that sense. Now, let's look at exam score. Scoring 0% on a test doesn't mean you did not take the test. That's just the score you had. There are even tests where you could score negatives. These are some analytical tools that can be used on an interval scale. Descriptive stats including frequencies, central tendency measures including the mode, median and mean, then measures of variability including range, standard deviation and variance. We can also conduct several parametric tests such as t-test and ANOVA and others. In situations where data collected is not normally distributed or abuses several assumptions, we can use non-parametric tests to analyze interval scale variables. The highest level of measurement is the ratio scale, which measures variables or data along a numeric scale with equal distances between adjacent values and also has a true zero starting point. Every characteristic of an interval scale applies to a ratio scale, except that on a ratio scale, zero is an absolute number. This implies that on a ratio scale, zero means that the variable under study is absent or does not exist. Because of this, ratio scale variables cannot have negative numbers. Also note that we can actually compare values of variables on a ratio scale in that they can be multiplied or divided. Since there is a common reference point, which is zero, Let's consider the weight of two people. Mary is 80 kg and John weighs 40 kg. Now because there is a common starting point for weight in both cases, which is zero, we can compare the two weights by division. And with this, we can conclude that Mary weighs twice as much as John. Let's look at other examples. When you are asked how many kids do you have, a person who responds with zero would mean that the person has no kids at all. The variable which is being measured, which is the number of kids, is absent. Also, let's look at height. No matter how short a person is, he or she can never have a negative height. I mean, what would that even imply? Okay, so let's look at the following statistical analysis that can be conducted on variables measured on a ratio scale. We have descriptive statistics including frequency distribution. We have measures of central tendency, mode, median, and mean. Also, on the ratio scale, we can measure the range, standard deviation, variance, as well as the coefficient of variation. On a ratio scale, we can also perform inferential statistics including parametric tests like t-test, ANOVA, Pearson correlation. Also, in cases where the data is not normally distributed or does not meet certain assumptions, we can perform non-parametric tests for ratio scale variables. As you might have noticed by now, the analytical options or tools become more available the higher you go on the scales of measurement. Now, this table summarizes and compares the various levels or scales of measurement. So you can tell that all the four levels of measurement categorize and label variables, but then only three of them, that is ordinal, interval, and ratio scales, rank the categories. And then further down, you see that only the interval scale and the ratio scale have equal intervals between the values on the scale. And the last point, which is a zero starting point or a true zero starting point, only a ratio scale has it. So you can tell that each scale is an incremental level of measurement, meaning that each scale fulfills the functions of the preceding scale plus an additional characteristic or function absent in that preceding scale. This is the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Kindly like, subscribe, comment, and share with others.